Nice, bro. Oh. Okay, okay. What's up, guys? Gracie Academy, Heat on Gracie, CM Punk, and Hannah Gracie! You guys have no idea what just happened. Luke Rockhold, Michael Bisping, one arm guillotine from the mount. Bisping has never been submitted until now. First round, talk about it. What, did you, what was your assessment of the first round? I, I think we gotta talk about the headbutt, don't we? Yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah. Well, the headbutt. Uh, okay, the headbutt, intentional or not, the headbutt sucks. So yeah. uh, this thing says he, he he lost a little bit of yeah. memory after the fight. I guess it affected it's him. Very unfortunate. I picked Rockhold to win this, but uh, my heart kind of said Bisping. I want to see Bisping pull it out. Right. He follows me on Twitter. Thanks, Michael. <laughs> but headbutts happen, you know. Yeah, it happens. And so. the truth is, some are very good at accidentally headbutting people. Others, it just happens in the confusion. You throw a hook, your head swings, they connect, and it affects one person more than the other. Because a lot of times it depends where my head impacts yours. And typically the head butter feels less impact than the head buddy. Sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Luke was not intentional. No, I don't think so. Either. Either. Definitely accident. They're both coming up at an angle at the same time. And boom, boom, it yeah. happens. So right. it wasn't a head butter, it was just head Regardless, Clash. Yeah. Crash. moving Crash. into the second round, they come out, have a small exchange. And then Luke throws like a nice kick to the head, like a very tricky little right kick to the head, which is almost like a slap kick, where it kind of came low, and he flicked his foot over, and it caught him, almost like a slap in the face. And Michael respected it, backed up a little bit, and then eventually came the baseball bat shin kick to the top of the head, very similar to the one Leoto used on Mark Munoz, where it just nicks the top. Like, don't don't mention that fight, bro. I know. I'm not mentioning it from a, you know, I know respect to the brothers. You guys, but the fact is the freaking baseball bat clips your head like that, the shin, mm -hmm. it affects you. And of course, Bisbee yeah. went down, and at that point he was in recovery mode, mm -hmm. right? So you don't want to get down right there. Oh, so he gets down, you guys want to kick him in the head or what? Kick yeah, him in the head. Boom, <laughs> <laughs> oh. he drops to his knees, he gets up, and at this point, look at a little bros. At this point, he's, Bisbee starts to get up to what we call what? The desperate double leg. When you're kind of rocked and you want to grab something to save yourself and to buy time, but Rockhold knew it was coming, so he stiff arm and went for these uppercuts right here. Boom. And he was punching kind of under the armpit at this point. Finally, Bisping got up, which is the right thing to do. Watch the hand snatch. Boom. Right into the front headlock, guillotine area. And at this point, show us the move. He sits down, comes to the angle, leg over the body, small hip angle right here. And at this point, it was very real pressure. Bisping falls this way, hoping to escape. Rockhold rides it right up and puts his hooks and posts his hand. One-handed guillotine. Look at go. One-handed guillotine from the mount. It was dope, you guys. There's so much to talk about. Because people are thinking, man, what's wrong? Why did Bisping get submitted like that? You know, is, is Rockhold amazing? Like, Everyone's confused about what's happening. And what we'd like to do is take a little bit of time to talk about why Bisping fell that way. What were the other alternatives? What would have happened if the other things happened? Why Rockhold pulled guard so fast? It's amazing. It's guillotine technique, amazing technique for MMA. Because every time you dive for a single or a double leg, you're freaking putting your head into the, into the trap there. And uh, guys, guys who are good at them are a head and shoulders step above the rest for sure, because it's a great advantage anytime someone shoots in. Let's talk about, um, let's get into the position, right into the guard pull position, where you already have kind of the modified wrap there, grabbing the chin, we've fallen, we've kind of made our angle right here, locked up, grab your own hand in there. So at this point, just to be clear for those who haven't learned this or don't know it, the idea is simple. You want to have your hips out towards this side, like shimmy off to the side, modified guard. So it's not a closed guard, the legs are actually here. And the reason for the modified guard is because if this leg were out, let it come out, Hidon would be able to walk over Phil's hips, over Punk's hips. Walk this way, Hidon. It would just walk over the hips a little more. Perfect. And now it negates the angle for the choke. Go back. Just by being square over his hips. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So just by being square, you don't have as much angle. Now, jump over his leg. You don't put it in the half guard right there, that ankle. By Phil having the leg in the middle right here, he can use that shin and this to shimmy his hips out towards me. Keep shimming, keep shimming. Hidon, keep moving. Phil, keep moving. Go, go. By using the inside legs, he's constantly creating the hip angle. And the benefit of that is it creates a void in front of Hidon's head where he can put pressure on Hidon's head and curl the choke into the hole right there. Go ahead. That's the pressure. You're shoving the guy's head into the hole that is being created by your hips being out. Now, what Hidon, or what Bisbee would have liked to have done is clear this leg right here. Use your hand to clear Hidon and fall past it to the side mount. From here, he would go rotate him, please. From here, he would end up side mounted. He would punch his hand under the neck, lock hands behind the neck over here, get up on his shoulder, and squeeze with the Von Flu choke and Rockhold would have passed out. It's an amazing choke, but only if he gets past the leg. 
What happened? That's so cool, right? Things that are so amazing are still so far to reach in some cases. <laughs> so close, but so far. So get to this modified guard, feel hips out a little bit, chin cuffed, everything's nice right there. Hands grab. Now, uh, let's get this arm out of the equation real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah now this, this works arm in and arm out. Let's not get it twisted. The move works both. The rock hold got arm out, so it's pure neck on the choke, which is more dangerous, but also harder to control. But he did a great job controlling it. So now in Bisbee's attempt to cross the border and get his hips past this leg, Rockhold had such a nice body bite that when he flopped that, watch that leg bite and keep going with him. Look, he just stays with it. Look, 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 look. And now at this point, he takes his leg over and here, because stay there, stay there, stay there, both two hands, stay in two hands. But Rockhold felt like he was falling right here. So that's when he posted the hand out. Rotate, everything broke. But right here, his wrist is in the trachea. So the blade of the bone of the wrist is right in Bisbing's trachea, and his glove got stuck under his stomach a little yeah, bit. Go a little deeper, more. like that. There. And when your glove is under your body, it's the same as your hand holding it. Your body is pinching it. So now all Punk does right here is drive his hips and pull this elbow to his back pocket. You'll see the trachea get crushed, mm -hmm. and the neck crank is happening over the trachea crush. It's amazing. Yeah, I was that's impressed that's that he put his hand out and let go of one hand. Well, I'm sure people are confused, like you just, where the hand was. And what you explained, the glove in between the bodies Stuck. is like the glove is being held by just some kind of force. And that's our two bodies together. That's so really cool. He had the hands locked and he let go to get up for dominant position. It's called position before submission, my friends. Rockhold followed the freaking rule and it paid out big time for him. Unbelievable. Look pretty slick. One arm. Look I, think, I think in UFC history, uh, he's done. He's done that now. Um, I know Cole Miller's done it. Uh, one of the Diaz maybe or someone. Um, um, some one of those lighter weight guys. I don't remember. Maybe yeah. I don't remember. Favor. Favor's done it. Yeah. It's dope. It's it's rare. It's real. Now the choke started with the two arms. Yes. Like there was pressure being applied. Oh yeah. Well, he was guard. guard was bottom of the guard. So why Bisping jumped. Well, correct. So there's pressure being applied. So it was a two-arm choke for you know 80%. Yeah, seven, eight seconds. Correct. And the very end, he pulled out one hand. So Boom. it was a one-handed choke, but it's also a two-handed choke. And it was also only having to do 20% of the squeeze because you're right. It added up. Correct. No doubt. All that seconds from the guard he was squeezing before the flop, mm -hmm. it was, he was out. The only reason he flopped was because he was about to tap. So you might as well do something. Desperation. Yeah. Jump for survival. Now let's talk a little bit about. Some people are like, you know, I mean, we're talking to all different levels. We're talking to. You know, no belts, from white belts, all the way to black belt who watch these videos. And, and I like for everyone to gain something. And some of the no belts out there are thinking, wait a minute, from that modified guard, if you're not trapped, why aren't you jumping where there's a huge window of escape the other way, right? Yeah. So, uh, you guys can figure that so they can see the opening of the window. So I would say like, yeah, that's exactly right. Now, sometimes that modified guard on the guillotine, it's with Punk's leg inside Hedon's legs. Other times, that leg is across the lap. You want to sit up, you don't real quick, let him up. So they can still no, 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 so see this. Yeah. It's across the, the whole lap. That's totally fine as well. In fact, this works better a lot of the times. So head in, leg over the back, and like this. So some people are wondering, why didn't Bisbing just jump to where there's a huge opening? Because this is called a three-quarter guard. One, two, three. We're missing the quarter here. So why doesn't someone just jump out to the opening over here? Two reasons. Number one, you risk hurting your neck straight up. If your neck is in a vice grip right here and you jump that way, you're going to tweak your neck over that, which is why the standard defense is to jump this way, big jump, is to jump away from it. Because from here, you're safe, your neck is aligned up with your spine. Jump back. So same thing, bro, across the body, nice angled hips. So people are wondering, why doesn't Bisbee just jump towards the freaking opening over here and run away, run away? Freeze, right here, pumpkin, grab the tricep, feed the bicep, walk the legs, walk, 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 trap this, and once he locks his leg, if he just pulls and arches his hips, anaconda right there, okay? So if anaconda grip, anaconda grip, walk towards the legs, lock it up. So when you jump from the guillotine, you jump into an even tighter choke. And that's why our friends are not jumping in that direction. Yeah. And I don't think a lot of them do that. No, I don't think so. There's a lot of combinations when it comes to anacondas, uh, darces, yes. guillotines. It's all so connected. So these, it's a good thing to invest in and learn these because, you know, choke some guys out, especially in the no-gi world. Do you want to demonstrate one time from the standing when the first head wrap was gotten, was achieved from uh, Rockhold, how if Rockhold wasn't so swift in pulling guard, the same way Chael Sonnen did with um, Shogun, when they fought the last time, right? When he caught him in the guillotine. If the guy who's doing the guillotine is not so fast pulling guard, and why they're so fast, is because they're worried about what the other guy's gonna do preemptively to get it on the side. Let's demonstrate one time so they can remember that. Yeah. So from here, do the snap down real quick. So you have his neck already pumped, feed the neck. So he snatches it here, stand up, you don't, boom. If Punk gets the guillotine threat, and he does not pull guard and create his modified guard, watch what he don't gonna do. Outside trip. Now what side is he don't landing on here? Opposite the choke. 
And then he's gonna pull his hand out, he's gonna hug Punk's neck, he's gonna lock hands. Once again, shoulder choke right there, Von Flew, tapping him out right there. So, simple enough? Yeah, so get guard. Sooner than he gets the takedown, yeah. Yeah, and, but some have been successful standing, right? Right. Some have, you know, ran their opponents to the fence and been successful standing, so there's, it's good to do both. Would you say that, um, how would somebody escape the standing guillotine if not doing that? If they, like, what do they do to make it difficult? Well, the, the whole idea of putting pressure, jumping up, putting your butterfly hooks in, like yeah. lifting your body up, doing things like that. Tucking your chin a little bit. Sometimes I do stuff like this, where if people have my neck, wrap, rotate, rotate. I use like, my shoulder on their wrist, grabbing hands, you know, just fighting this pressure down. So whenever they want to lift it, all things to stop that. And people's necks are so strong. They've been choked so much in their yeah. training that you'd be surprised how much they can resist. Congratulations. Hopefully you guys learned as much from this fight as we did. Thank you, Luke. Thank you, Michael, for the fight. Amazing guillotine, amazing defense attempts right there. So much to gather. And if you guys watching has got at least one or two nuggets, then it was worth your time and it was worth our time and it was worth Punk's time coming out from Chicago here to have a good training session with us. I just amazing. came here to do the breakdown. <laughs> Show Rock holding Bisping what a real beard looks like. That's what's up. Uh, but it's all good, you guys. We're glad he's here. The winner of the last Gracie breakdown uh, was Graham Summers, who wins a free month of training at any certified training center around the world, including headquarters. If you, Graham, you want to fly out here and train for a week or a month, it's 30 days, training with us 100%, train with Punk over here, get choked a little bit, be my guest 100%. And if not, there's a CTC near you, a certified training center, go find one. For the rest of you out there who want to find a place to train, go to gracieschools.com. There's a bunch of CTCs, find one near you, go in there, tell them he don't hand or sent you, and they'll give you 10 days free. If they don't, we'll come choke them, no problem, okay? We'll take care of you 100%. The next Gracie giveaway, we talked to our brother Halleck. Metamorris is coming up. And we said, yo, Halleck, we got lots of fans out there, lots of dedicated jiu-jitsu heads, and lots of people who are old enough to know the history of the Hanzo. Sakuraba rivalry. The, the Sakuraba Gracie family rivalry, right? Yes. And Sakuraba's it's going down, you guys. Metamorris 5, it's happening. November 22nd, Long Beach Convention Center here in Southern California. And uh, Halleck was down to throw in a couple free tickets. Third row, third row tickets, Metamorris live at the event. And uh, if you guys want to get to there and make it happen, we can do that for you. So here's how it's. Third row? Third row, right there with us, 100%. It doesn't better than my seat. That's what's up. Um, so it's going down, you guys. So to win, all you gotta do is go to facebook.com slash Gracie Academy, go to our Facebook page, and there's a thread there with this video. And on that thread, we want you to post a comment and tell us, Hanzu or Sakuraba, and how? How? Who's gonna win, and how are they gonna win? What's your prediction, okay? We're gonna announce the winner on the Facebook page next weekend, because we're here right now, next weekend is Weekend off, and the following weekend is Metamorris. So we're gonna announce a ticket winner next weekend, and then you can get out and make it happen. So the weekend before the fight. The weekend before the fight. Yes. One week from now, we're gonna announce the winner. Spread the word, tell your friends, and uh, it's gonna be crazy, you guys. Lots of other amazing fights on the card, including Roy McDonald against JT Torres. Jiu-Jitsu, grappling, submission only 20 minutes. No rules, no, <laughs> no lots of rules, no <laughs> points. <laughs> no points. Um, Submission only, you guys. It's gonna be so dope. So it's dope. Be, it's okay? probably gonna be the best event ever. It's probably gonna be the sickest. And if you can't get to the event live and you wanna check it out, metamorris.com, get the live stream. The live stream link is in the detailed description below. Um, get the live stream, watch it online 100%. And if you live very, very far away and you win the tickets but you can't come, of course we're gonna hook you up with the free live stream for you and your friends to check it out at your house. Cool? If you, if you saw the last Metamorris, you know how awesome these events are, so I suggest getting on this train. Yeah, especially if you're team jujitsu, and you probably are because you're watching the breakdowns, unless you're one of the mini keyboard samurais who comes to the breakdowns just to talk how much trash, how much you know and how much we don't, then in that case, but they still love us because they can use us to talk trash. That's mm -hmm. true. Yeah, so they're still grateful so for we us. Build We're not leaving that. comments on whatever YouTube channel they have. I I do sometimes. Do you? No, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> yeah. It's negative energy. You guys, much respect. Honor to have our friend CM Punk here representing mm -hmm. with us, training for the week. Mm -hmm. And uh, this guy's getting sharp, you guys. Say what you want, man, but his freaking guillotines are sick. All right, much respect. For those who don't know about the freaking Gracie family, Hansel Gracie situation, check out the, uh, the trailer. We're going to run it right now. Much respect. A fight is only over when it's over. You know, I remember there was 17 seconds to finish the round. A little mistake that I made, he was able to capitalize on. It cost me a broken arm. 
the nickname him the Gracie Hunter because he beat a couple Gracies. He beat me, he beat Royce, and he beat Hoyler. I made it to the end of the day. I made it to the end of the day. I made it to the end of the day. I made it to the end of the day. I made it to the end of the day. I made it to the end of the day. I made it to the end of the day. I made it to the end of the day. It's time to get back in there. Don't go. Nice, bro. Oh, man. The power of the greasy rash guard. He just comes out of nowhere. It's a nice rash guard. These <laughs> are available on the website. Good dinner. <sighs> Keeping it playful. Good job, bro. Oh, man.